Welcome back to the channel, you kooks. Today we are building upper cabinets in a Ford Transit van. And this is not the most fun task, but you will be happy you follow along this video when it's done, as we're gonna teach you how to make a clean, professional upper cabinet in your van conversion. All right, so right now we're working on our layout for our upper cabinets, and we like to draw it out. So once we've drawn it out, we have our measurements here and you'll just subtract from what your measurements you want them to be and create a cut list so that you can cut everything and put everything together very quickly. So that's what we're going to do right now. So now that Danny has worked and made a nice uh, layout and cut list, we're now over here on the table saw and we're going to cut our boards. We have a nice Vermont maple here and if you don't have a table saw or a planer, you can buy pre-cut boards at Home Depot. It is going to be more expensive. And now we're going to run our board through the table saw to cut our styles and our rails for our face frames. And we'll kind of show you more about those when we're assembling them. And then we will throw them through the planer and we're going to clean up that saw burn mark and it's going to look nice and clean. And then we'll assemble these things. When you rip all your pieces on the table saw, you're going to want to come over to the planer. Just be in mind when you're cutting on the table saw, you want to cut an eighth of an inch over on each width because now we take them to the planer, we're going to clean this edge off and we're going to set it to a sixteenth above our width and then we'll drop it down to our width and run them through again and it's going to give us a nice clean look. It's going to kind of get rid of that rough saw cut. So not only will the planer uh, take away that saw mark that we were just showing you it'll also just create a nice flat even board and it'll take away any imperfections that might have occurred when you're cutting on the table saw i have my cut list and now that we're done with the uh widths i can cut it to length and what i've done here is i've taken the measurement and gone and put 14 I need two 14 so i wrote 14 measured out about where 14 would land so that i have all of these measurements here so I have 14, 14, 11, 11, 14 and a half, 14 and a half. So I have all of my measurements on here so I don't have to reference this anymore. I just measure as I see the number in front of me. All right now that I've cut everything to length what we're doing is we're getting all of our pieces jigged through with the Craig jig. You want all of your cross pieces to go into your rails that go in top. Your rails are going to be clean and they're only going to have jigs on the edge to have your, your other piece go in like this. That's your jig, and that's gonna go, this is the middle piece, so I'm gonna have one on top and bottom, I just have done the bottom first. So that's gonna go in like that, so the whole bar on your rails are gonna be clean, except for your edges that are, going, that are gonna go into your styles. So when you're choosing your side to jig, what you want to do is you wanna like look at your board and see what the cleanest side is and put the ugliest side on the inside where your jig will go. So you want the most imperfections to be to the inside or to where the eye can't see. And then a good way to check to make sure that everything fits um, is to put your inside piece with your outside piece closest to all of it and make sure that it sandwiches and it all fits. And then you want your inside pieces where your um, cabinet separations are going to go, you want those to go at your rails. So your rails have jigs and your inside pieces have jigs and your outside pieces are clean your styles. So we measured out the length of this and we divided it by four spaces so that we know where to put our spacers for each um, individual section. So right now I'm just going through and I'm marking where the center piece is going to go. So where this is going to go I marked here, where this is going to go I marked here. So that when I go in with my screws they can be right in place where it's supposed to be. I want a speed square so that you make sure everything's square. Like if they're fit exactly they'll go in pretty square but you just want to make sure. So when you're screwing these in you'll want everything to be very flush when you go through them with a band sander. So make sure that it's flush here and I like to keep a clamp with a big foot on the bottom so it's a, it's a big fat foot underneath that holds it straight. And then you'll want to check that it's square. Make sure it's square and then you can start drilling. Since the transit is so wonderful and it likes to slope all over the place randomly We've had to make our front cabinets be a whole separate one because we needed this to start as a three inch. 
and come all the way down to match that curve. It has a fat top and we're going to put that, we're going to mend them together with some um, pocket holes here. And that's how we match the curve of the roof. Very interesting. Took almost all day. Now I'm coming through. I got these L brackets and I'm going to attach to every part where there's a roof stud on the back of the face frame into the frame and then up into the roof. And I'm just using these little guys. So we just put our face frames in roughly with L brackets and I marked a couple spaces on the roof of where we wanted it to go based off of our template because we know that we want our, our cabinets to be this big and this deep. And then this is a little piece of the face frame just and I put them up like this and I measured from the wall so that it would fit perfect. And then I marked a couple places with pencil. And um, then we knew that we could put our stuff in here temporarily and actually make templates that we're gonna work from. So we're gonna make dividers now. And now we have the perfect space. We're not guessing anymore because it's up here in the air. And we can make templates that match where these dividers are gonna go. So the van does do a substantial curve about like right here, it starts to dip down pretty hard. So we had to make like a whole separate piece. And you can see that I sanded it all the way down to about the same like one and a half inch here. Today what we worked on were the templates. We made templates out of cardboard first, and then we put them on some cardboard just to make sure that they fit because the, the cardboard kind of wobbles a bit. So this uh, actually fit now, and you can see there are various size of templates for each divider. The way that we made these two is I made a kicker. So I wanted to make sure everything was square. So we hung our face frame where it was going to go and it kind of could rock back and forth. So I made a kicker that would hold the corner to the wall and it would kick it square. So then I would push it square and make sure that this fit in there so that these are square. All right, so we're putting in our dividers. We just put them in with the nailer, a nail gun, and it's actually looking really nice. Now we're gonna put a nailer here along the front so we can attach our bottoms. And then we're gonna do one underneath here to attach this to the wall. The face frames are hanging from the L brackets off of the ceiling that we showed you before. We also connect the face frames to the dividers of the cabinets with a brad nail gun and we put the nails vertically along the face frame into the divider. We also connect the face frames with the nailer we just installed there on the bottom of the face frame and once we connect the bottom we will also connect the dividers to the bottom using the nail gun as well. In the back, we attach the cabinets together with a header. The header is the piece that runs from the first divider to the second divider. We cut this and then we put it into place and we put it into the wall with an inch and a quarter quick screws. We also use small L brackets to attach each divider to the header just for additional stability. The header is attached with the positive connection to the framing we installed in the van. Check out our framing video to see how we did it and I'll overlay a clip of where the header is attached to. This makes for a nice solid bomber upper cabinet. Alright, so now we have the dividers in, we have our nailers in, we went the extra measure and we put some L brackets between the nailers just to make sure that it's super sturdy. You can hang off this now. And now we're going to scribe the bottom. We're making it happen. Danny just cut and scribed and worked so hard on all, this, on all the dividers for the pieces here. And now we're gonna work on getting this bottom cut. It's a real pain in the butt, but you just gotta work it over and over and over again and scribe and scribe and scribe. So we cut a piece, it's 14 inches, it hangs over a bit, that gives us enough. And we're gonna scribe the back and the front and we're going to cut it. It's going to take a, it's going to be a process. It's going to take us a while. It's going to take you a while. So just note that when you are building these vans, you're going to be scribing and making lots of templates. So when you don't have a nice table saw, we're going to show you how to get a straight cut. 
So we just basically got a nice straight edge here and we ran it along and we clamped it down. And then you can see we just align it with the foot of the jigsaw here. And that'll just allow us to run a straight smooth line all the way across this board. Okay, so we're gonna use a quarter round as our nailer to hold the cabinets up on the bottom. And I just got my quarter round bitten here. I'm just gonna set it to length and I'm gonna run the router along the edge first and then I'm gonna rip it on the table saw. And of course, if you don't have a router, you can buy quarter round at Home Depot or Lowe's or any wood store. So when you're a kook like us, it's always good to practice on some scrap wood. I just ran my quarter round bit on this uh, piece of scrap oak here and it gave it a good little chunk out of it and I like what that looks like. So I am gonna go ahead and send it. Okay, so here is that quarter round I was working on. Turned out really nice. That DIY quarter round and it looks kind of bent but once we nail it to the wall it won't be bent anymore. We attached the bottom with our Brad nail gun as shown earlier to the bottom into the dividers and into the nailer we installed. Next we will put the quarter round along the back of the cabinet and that will serve as another support for the bottom of the cabinet. We did not get a video of this because we were just working so hard we forgot but the nailer actually holds the cabinets into place and runs along the back underneath corner of the cabinet. All right, well that's a wrap on the upper cabinets. We've got them installed at least. And now all we have left are the cabinet fronts and the hinges and that's the easy part. There was a lot of scribing in this project and a lot of problem solving because the van does do this. So, we worked through it and you will too. And now we have to build cabinets on the other side. So we'll take what we learned from this side and we'll move it over here. I think some of our templates will work, but we have checked some of our templates and they are not even close. So the van does all kinds of weird things in the transit. It's, it's not consistent everywhere. So the next step is cutting out all your door fronts. This is gonna take a while and it's very important to draw everything out and get your measurements down so all your grain lines up. This took us a few hours to dial in perfectly, but it's so worth it in the end as it gives your van a professional and clean look. We cut all the doors on the table side, first vertically, then we took them to the chop saw and cut the widths. This seemed to work out well for us and it gave us a nice clean edge. Now it's time to put the tape on our door fronts. This is gonna take away that plywood edge and give your door fronts a nice clean look. We use this by using our birch veneer tape and an iron. We iron them all on while the other person basically cuts off the excess. Once we're done with this, we we'll move on to hinges. We use a three quarter inch cup hinge and you can use any hinge you want. We just use this type of hinge because we have in the past and we have the tools to make it happen. If you use any other hinge, it will work fine. Once we installed all the hinges onto the doors, we then took them into the van and installed them into the van. The grain lined up perfectly and we were very happy with our end result. Thank you.